Hey, good morning, guys. Greg Christensen, the Grand View Livestock here, and, and this uh, today, this morning, we're we're doing our annual uh, sonogram wire here, and we've got a little different setup this year. Uh, yeah, and now he's graduated vet school. He's a bona fide veterinarian, and he's got this uh, cage we're, we're using now. And he's sort of got a goggle kind of a thing that you can see him through. Works a little bit better. And so the reason we're doing this is we can determine the this is just our ewe lambs we're doing. And which ones are are bred or at least uh, shortbred because the rams are still in them. So they could have got bred yesterday. And he's not going to particularly be able to see those up. They probably got to be maybe at least three weeks along before he can see them, maybe a month. But uh, we can identify those. And we'll have some of these for sale also. We'll have some new lambs that's verified bread. And then we'll have some that's probably short bread. Uh, meaning that they could have been bred in the last 30 days. Uh, it's just too hard to tell. I know. And so, uh, here we go. And they've been through here enough. By now that they, they know the routine, uh, they feed through real nicely. Of course, not all this is new and they're a little skittish about climbing this ramp, but here we go. Come to your place, set up, and do this for your flock also. And there's probably some merit in doing the, the ewes also. We're only doing the ewe lambs because we don't. When he does the ewes, and you know, if you want to separate the twins from the singles and feed them different, we're not really able to do that. And there's very few of our ewes that don't get bred, so it's not really worth him going through them like it is on these ewe lambs. There'll be uh, some of them not bred, and then some we can. We, we'll probably try to feed the ones with twins uh, a little bit more. We want to know how many of them are having twins and how good you know our, our breeding program is. We want them fertile, and so that's another reason we want to do these ewe lambs because once they Lamb, I mean, we don't keep track of who's got twins, who's got this lamb, who's got that lamb. It's, it's just, that's just too much. we got too many of them lambing, and, and we, we don't tag every all those lambs. Put the color paint on them to identify them. Then we'll just sort them later because it didn't work for us to exactly sort them right now.
try to. Ready? So here's what Wyatt's looking at. Let's see if you can look in that other hole. Yeah, I can't. You have to pull it clear away. Okay. I might be able to do that. We're getting close. No, it doesn't want to focus in, does it? Yeah, sorry guys. That didn't work, <laughs> work too well. We'll try again later. Yeah, I was trying to get you a picture through his toggles there, but uh, it just doesn't quite want to focus. We'll try it again. I'll try to look over your shoulder so we can see. <laughs> Let's see. Angle. No, it doesn't want to do it at all. Well, that's a bummer. Um. Hey guys. Well, we got uh, finished up there with Wyatt and Sonogram. Oh, I don't know what there was. Around 400 view lamps, I guess. Uh, I don't know yet what percentage we got. Um, less than, or probably around 60 or less. Which why I said that's probably about average for a larger scale operation that doesn't, uh, you know, feed them all through the summer and everything. And uh, he said no. It, um, and he's seeing that around places this year. Sometimes it's just a year, probably. A, you know, he said that's just about the average though. And so we'll have some of those for sale. Of course, they could be shortbread that he couldn't see yet. The rams are still in with them. And he said there's no reason. Some of these aren't bred here in the last 30 days or a little less that he can't see. This group here is that way. You can see they're nice big ewes and uh, ewe lambs. So, you know, they're going to be. They're going to be sold. I think they're sold already. And then we have some others. Uh, if somebody wants some that possibly bred or go ahead and stick a ram with them and breed them for fall lambs, you know, that's always a good plan too. It just doesn't fit with us. Uh, with having so many and then having, uh, you know, we're harvesting in the fall. And we just don't, don't have time to watch over and take care of that many. It, it's you know we're gonna we're just gonna lay them one time a year and that's gonna be spring but that's what i would do with, with some of these if it would fit our plan otherwise they'll be for sale so if you're interested i'll have my uh, uh email address there in the description or some of you probably already have it but uh let me know if anybody's interested otherwise we'll probably keep feeding them out and we'll probably keep some of those ourselves too so hey uh, we'll probably head to the sale with a bunch uh, yet a couple times this month again I don't know if we'll be available to go to the sale personally or we'll just send them so we may not have a video of that so thanks for watching I appreciate y'all bye now Well, after uh, looking over the numbers, Wyatt, uh, Craig checking these, uh, I'm going to have to say, you know, we're a little disappointed in how many we got bred. It was, uh, it wasn't the 60 or 65 percent that we were probably used to. So I am kind of thinking we've got some smaller lambs too, more than we usually do. And I'm just wondering, I guess, if it was the oats that we were feeding um, earlier in the year. We started feeding the oats when they ran out of the forage. And that was about middle of December until uh, probably about the end of January we, we ran out of the oats. And then we started buying the commercial feed that we fed last year. Um and I don't know, they're, they're eating it up. They ate the oats fairly well. I just don't know. It didn't seem like they gained as well on it as what I'd hoped. And we put a protein pellet in with it the last, oh, probably three weeks. So, 
But uh, hey, that's the goat business. Sheep and goat business. It don't always work out like you hoped, and and uh, sometimes you feel like you're more disappointed than you are uh, elated with the outcome of whatever you're doing, whether it's weaning or or lambing or the uh, price you get at the sale barn. You know, you're always probably more optimistic uh, than it turns out being. I guess that's what that's what keeps us in the business, isn't it? So, just wanted to add that here at the end. Um, so yeah, and we'll have we'll have some of those for sale. Those probably shortbread ones. We'll probably end up keeping most of the ewe lambs that are uh, pregnant. We did have. Uh, we did have several with twins. I don't recall how many right off. Um, but, uh, anyway. Yep, uh, I know that, uh, you know, that's probably how it is for you guys too. It's just part of the business. So, hey, hope you all have a good evening. Thanks for watching. Hey, uh, one more PS or PSS, I guess. I wanted to put in a plug for Wyatt. Uh, he graduated vet school, oh, I don't know, last summer or something. Got married, and he, he's got a small room in a practice that he, and he'll come to your place. He's licensed in several states. I know he's been to Indiana and Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and probably Texas. I don't know. He'll probably go just about wherever you need him if you've got enough. Uh, numbers or you can call him um, sometimes he can work with you over the phone on a lot of different things but uh, if you're looking for a small ruminant vet uh, Wyatt Catron the Catron Veterinary Services I'll put his uh, uh, info there in the uh, comments and uh, you know give him a call if you're having some some issues of some kind or you just need a, a vet to work with you about have to have a vet now to have any kind of antibiotics um, so he can work with you on that also so hey give wide a shout if you need something